Okay, uh, this occasion is, we're going to do Grandmother's This Was Your Life. Uh, <laughs> and this uh, production is being brought to you by Pepsi, Cola, Diet Pepsi today. Uh, lays in a can. Yeah, lays in a can. So I'm going to pass the microphone uh, over to someone who held their hand up first, Charlene, I think. Uh, Mom, do you know when you were born? <laughs> well, I think I was there. I, it was... Uh, <laughs> It was on July 15th, 1910. Where? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, I think it was in the Hayden community down in Van Zandt County. Were you adopted? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need to pass to ask a question. Who would like to ask the first question? I'll ask one. Cora? Sit down right here so we can just start passing. Yeah, yeah. That's not my question. Um, <laughs> I'd like to know. I'm, I'm, do we say who we are? No, we know who you are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, my great grandchildren will not know who I am. Uh, but okay, I want to know what was. Uh, I mean, 60 years of your 90 years were with uh, with uh, Granddad Lindsay, El. Um, what were what was his uh, favorite meal? What was his least favorite meal? Oh my. Well, he wouldn't eat squash. He didn't like that in any yeah, kind of shape or form. And anything else I fixed, he did. He ate. <laughs> he was very easy to please. Okay. Uh, grandmother, you told me a story one time about when you were a little girl and you had a playhouse and you built something for it. What did you build for your playhouse? <laughs> well, Daddy used to buy apples and make those big wooden boxes. And uh, we had a whole lot of those, and we had a little little house in the back of on the back of our lot that had two rooms. I made furniture for those <laughs> for those two rooms, and we played out there a lot. It's my sisters and I and our friends. <laughs> Sue's going to edit all this together, so she's going to make it look good, Mom. Well, <coughs> yeah, you don't put some ass in your chair, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, Arby, uh, Carby asked you a question about you and Daddy. I'd like for you to tell him how you got married. Oh. Yeah. 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 Now we're going. Well, I'm not really proud of that. <laughs> well, I think it's neat. Well, I mean, uh, I'm not proud. I'm proud I got married, but uh, we didn't do it exactly the right way. <laughs> Uh, we were supposed to get married in December, and uh, that was during the Depression, and our families were both poor. They didn't have money for things like weddings, so we decided we would uh, pull one on them, and we just eloped. <laughs> and where did you go? We went to Oklahoma. That's where you didn't have to wait three days. For <laughs> Anybody go with you? Oh yes, we had a good friend named ba Dan Burton, and he teased us about that until we announced it in December, and he he threatened to tell that we were already married, but he never did. He just threatened us. <laughs> so you kept it a secret. We kept it a secret until December. <laughs> I'd like to know how it was raising these children of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how, how good they were and what they did that was naughty. That should well, take a while. <laughs> Which one? Which one? <laughs> the first part or the, the second, second part? part. <laughs> Does this have to be really the truth? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Vivian was the perfect daughter. She was just. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> She was just a little child. She acted like she might be 12 years old. She was just one of those children. But when she was 11 and a half, we had Dick. <laughs> well, I can't say too much about him when he was little. It was when he got older that, he t that we had to cut, uh, cut his activities down. <laughs> When he was uh, in SMU, he uh, <laughs> he was uh, president of the fraternity club, and uh, 
he would, uh, well, there was a lot of drinking going on now. I won't say that he was a part of it. It's on video now. We need to edit this thing. <laughs> but this is late night editing. <laughs> he had to, a lot of times he had to put some of his, his uh, classmates to bed because they couldn't make it on their own. <laughs> but that's when he and Cheryl Ann started going together. and. I think she kind of straightened him out. She kept him straight. She helped me a lot. So. Okay, well, now that we've opened that can of worms, I'm going to not talk about, well, I wasn't going to talk about the year I spent in Child Protective Services, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should have left him out of this. <laughs> <laughs> it can still be done. <laughs> I um, think you have been a very good example of a grandmother, and you've really um, been uh, more of a grandmother to me than I've ever known. And I want to know what was your example, or, or why are you so such a wonderful grandmother? Well, I've had wonderful grandchildren, <laughs> and I you know I had a granny who was just super. And uh, she she never scolded me in my life or even said a crossword. And we I spent an awful lot of time with her, and she taught me a lot of things. And <laughs> so what is her, I, name? her name was uh, uh, Molly Louise, and uh, my dad was her son, her oldest son. And she was just a wonderful grandmother. And I thought. Well, I want to be like Granny when I grow old, and I've tried my best. So. But I appreciate you saying that, Kim. I really do. Okay, I have a question. What is your favorite, or what what are, what's your favorite family vacation you ever took? Family? Oh, this was a scream when I was a little girl about about. Uh, uh, I was think I was six or seven then. My uh, my daddy, we lived on a farm. My daddy had had a real good cotton crop that year, and he bought two Model A Fords. It was way back in 1915 or 16, along there. Now, I didn't know any of this. Uh, I didn't know I was going to have to <laughs> say all these things, or I would have tried to brush up a little bit, but I didn't know what to brush up on. So, But anyway, we, he decided he was going to take us on a trip. So there were, uh, let's see, I think they were six children then. And uh, uh, so the oldest one was a boy, and he, he could drive one of the cars, and Daddy drove the other one. Well, we packed all of our stuff on top of the cars, or we, they did, I didn't, I was too little. And uh, we drove to Corpus Christi. Well, it took us about three days to get down there because, the, you know, we didn't have pavement in that day. But they had gravel roads and it rained on us and they had to put those ice and glass curtains up <laughs> to keep the rain out, out of the car. I guess some of you remember that, but <laughs> most of you wouldn't. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> and uh, it, it was just a scream. Well, there were no motels and very few hotels in, so we had our quilts and things, and uh, at night we would stop and spread our things out <laughs> and go to bed. However, we cook, they cooked first. They built a fire. And I remember one thing, even though I was such a small child, I remember how good bacon smelled when it was cooking out on the fire like that. Oh, that was so good. And uh, while we were, we were very, well, we didn't know very much because we lived way back in the country. And I didn't go to town more than once a year. Some of you might know what Wheels Point is, but it's not a very big town. And uh, so, uh, one uh, daddy ever, we called him Papa then. We we called him Mama and Papa until we moved to town. We decided that wasn't dignified enough, so we all started saying Mother and Daddy, <laughs> and that's how that started. And our parents before us called theirs Mo and Paul. <laughs> and he calls you Mo. Oh yeah, he called he's real, real, real. <laughs> But uh, anyway, um, oh. I think I had my first ice cream cone. I had lots, uh, Daddy had made 
ice cream at home lots of times. And the, his family was so big, he used to gallon in a half freezer. And all the neighbors would come in, and he'd make make them twi make it twice so we could pass it around. <laughs> but uh, we had a lot of ice cream. But I never had had an ice cream cone before, and I thought that was the best the thing I ever ate. <laughs> so uh, uh, then let's see. That was on the way home, I think. While we were down there, we uh, there were. Uh, on the beach, there were cottages that you could rent, and I never had had fresh fish like we had had fish that we caught out of the creek and things like that, but we caught in the ocean. And oh, it was so good! Daddy would bring us fish, in the, you know, for dinner, and uh, then we just really ate. And one of my sisters got stung by a stingery. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, that wasn't very funny either because that lasted a long time. But while we were there, word came that a, a well, what do you call it? Hurricane. Hurricane was coming. And uh, so we left, we packed up and left a little early. Daddy, well, the older people, I was about, I was the fourth child. They were three, four older than me. And, uh, so we, we beat the storm out. We got home before it hit. And do you know that that very little cottage that we were in was swept out in the ocean. So. Wow. <laughs> so that was, all right, that's all I have to say about my first one. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, we got to take a bathroom break. Me? Yes, no? Okay. Um, raising Dick and Vivian must have been an adventure in and of itself. But what were your... Well, we know with Dick it was probably a daily embarrassment thing going on. But <laughs> what was the most? What were the most embarrassing things that ever happened with you and Dick and you and Vivian? Oh, I don't remember being embarrassed by him. Well, oh, one time you were when I got my arm stuck in that coke <laughs> machine at the theater. <laughs> 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 well, that's, it wasn't funny at the time. I tell you, <laughs> I was scared to death. I thought it was going. He might lose his hand. What happened? Well, we were uh, waiting for our tickets there at the movies, and uh, he was four, I guess, five maybe, and he wanted a coke, so he just stuck his hand in the machine <laughs> and he couldn't get it out, and he tugged and he tugged, and finally the uh, one of the men working there came by and. Got him loose somehow, right? <laughs> what did you tell him? I, I, there was, there was, uh, there was some up there. Yeah, <laughs> everybody, everybody had gathered to get it around out. him. <laughs> Most people were putting money in. I just tried to get it out without the money. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that was about the worst one we ever had with him. Can you think of Oh, she was the perfect child. <laughs> the yeah. perfect yeah. child. Oh, wow. I don't remember her being. Oh, what happened then, oh, I know one time. When she was uh, four years old, uh, people would give their children expression, they called it. They would have someone, an elocu elocutionist or somebody to teach them little poems and things to say. And uh, so she was four years old. We had her all dressed up in a little green organdy dress. She just looked like a doll. And the, they were lined, we were, it, this was in church, in Calvary Baptist Church. And they were the ones who were participating were all lined up there in a row, and so the the <clears throat> teacher was there in front of them, and she would call their names, and as she called their names, they would come out and give their little piece. <laughs> she called Vivian's name. Nobody, nothing happened. She just sat there. <laughs> she said Vivian, and so finally she had to go over and take her with a hand to lead her out there. Well, Vivian just absolutely, uh, she just did wonderful. She knew every, her perfect, <laughs> her little poem perfectly, and it was so funny. And <laughs> But anyway, after that, then why, she loosened up. <laughs> Stage fright. Okay, Jack. Okay, we've all enjoyed your cooking, every one of us. So I want to know, when did you start cooking it? Well, I think chocolate pudding was the first thing I ever cooked. I took cooking in high school, and uh, uh, our teacher was teaching us how to make chocolate pudding, and uh, she uh, she didn't tell us it was just like rubber, 
And that was my first one, so I decided I was going to do better the next time and I learned how to cook it. <laughs> um, how was it like raising your grandchildren when you got to visit them? Well, I never did raise much grandchildren, but I, I just enjoyed them. We did them. visit a lot. Yeah, we visited a lot, and I really enjoyed them. They were, of course, they were the perfect grandchildren. I didn't have any bad ones in the bunch. Okay. Yeah, I got some more questions. Yeah, this is in the end. Yeah, yeah, we can get questions. Hey, listen now, Mom. That's fine. Oh, I'm going to have something to say, definitely. There's a microphone now. Grandmother, I always remember the trips that we used to take from either Port Lavaca or San Antonio up to Dallas. Mm -hmm. And that route, I mean, it seemed like an interminable time to get to your house because we were always so excited about getting to your house. Mainly because you had that nice little tree in the front yard. Yeah. And then you had that huge tree in the backyard mm -hmm. that I remember used to climb all the way up to the top and then of course, there was uh, the. It was the first time I ever had my toast buttered before it was yes. toasted. Yes. I'll never forget that. You put the butter on the bread, then you stick it in the toaster, then it toasts. It's like, wow, this is cool. Mom, can we do this? And but just some incredible memories. But there were also memories of every weekend we always went to church. And then right after church, we went to Luby's Cafeteria, naturally. I mean, those are indelible memories in my mind. And now that a lot of things have been happening in my life, and I look back on that with kind of a different light, and what it made me think of, because I, I wanted to write a song for you for this very special occasion, it made me think of uh, uh, one of the parables that Jesus talked about when he threw seeds and he threw seeds out onto the, the rocks and he threw seeds into the thickets and, and then he finally threw seeds on some fertile soil and everything just kind of sprouted and grew and it stayed because they had the soil where the roots could grow strong and deep. And it made me think of that this family is such a complete family of faith that it took me a little bit longer maybe to come around to this, but uh, I have. And I think it's uh, one of the challenge, one of the, our charges, especially as parents, is to make sure that we have fertile soil for our children. And I kind of look at the children and then the grandchildren is that we plant these seeds with them, but we also need to make sure that the soil is there too so that these seeds can grow. So I wrote this song called Seeds of Faith. It's about my memories. <clears throat> oh, grandmother, right? Where good always triumphs and wrong becomes right. Where little David fights with Goliath and wins. Oh, grandmother. Tell me again Oh grandmother Will you sing to me tonight I can't fall asleep When I'm scared of the night The song where my little light Shines from within Oh grandmother Sing it again. Oh, how the seeds of faith are planted as each generation comes. Oh, the students turn to teachers, and his teachers pass it on. Help me, my tie is not straight. For 
were all in a hurry and I'm making us late. The church bells are ringing as the service begins. Oh, grandmother, help me again. Seeds of faith are planted. As each generation comes, oh, the students turn to teachers, and his teachers pass it on, and we water those seeds with. Now we've grown to trees so tall With love that flows like a waterfall And we'll survive what comes along Cause our roots are deep and our limbs are strong Celebrating the fruits of your life. The seeds you had planted have seeds of their own. And the forest from your faith has grown. Oh, how the seeds of faith are planted as each generation comes, oh, the students turn to teachers, and as teachers we pass it on, and we water those seeds with love. with those Kleenex over here. Mark, can I ask, so did you have to do that right now? We don't have to, we don't have to answer questions. We ask questions. Well, Mom, I want you to know that I was going to write a song. <laughs> but there were, there were four reasons I didn't do it. Number one, I can't write. Number two, I can't sing. <laughs> number three, I can't play a musical instrument. And number four, I never thought you'd live to be 90. Well, listen, I'm proud of you anyway, Dick. <laughs> Why don't you tell them about my, my, uh, tell them about my piano recital that you were so proud of me. Do you remember that one? No, you tell it. <laughs> I never finished it. Oh. <laughs> never finished it. Well, I would just like to say really quickly that my most vivid, some of my most vivid members, memories of being a child was my mother singing. Mm -hmm. She sang all the time. She still does. She works in the kitchen. She sings. I learned more songs from my mother, Irish songs. Uh, folk songs, old-fashioned songs, and that's something I'll always, and she sang to her grandchildren. Mm -hmm. She just sings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cheryl Ann has sung every song to our kids that she learned from grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Have you met Jim? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget when I did. <laughs> Too many times I think she would like to forget that she ever did. Since I was the first uh, outlaw to be led Lord, into the family. Uh, but, but not the last. But not the last. That's right. Grandmother, uh, it always intrigued me that you never did learn to drive. 
And I, I've always wanted to know why, because you're, you seem to know how to get around town, but why did you never ever learn to drive an automobile? You really want to know? Yeah. Well, one day I was with a bunch of school teachers, and uh, Lindsay and I hadn't been married very long, and we were going to a convention. And I was driving, it was a Model T car, it was Daddy's car, of course, and uh, <laughs> we were going along one of these country roads on gravel, and that thing flipped over to where I could control it. Nobody was hurt, but they, the hats were sure in, in a bad shape. <laughs> Everybody was scared to death. <laughs> so I, I decided that uh, I'd let somebody else do the driving from now on, and that's what I did. And that's why you're 90. <laughs> <laughs> Grandmother, over the years you've told stories about both of your grandmothers that you love so much. Yes. So why don't you, for the young kids that are here, why don't you tell a little bit about both of your grand grandmothers so that they'll know. Both my grandmothers? Well, my mother's mother died when I was young. Uh, she, and she lost her eyesight before. She was a widow and had to live with one of her children. Well, she didn't live with our family because we had too big, too much family. And, but she did live with, with my aunt and uncle, and they were, they just had two children. And uh, let's see now, what, I didn't know too much about her. I, I just know that she was a kind, sweet person, and, and we all loved her so much. And then, uh, but my other, my dad's grandparents uh, were just, well, they were, we lived neighbors to them, and uh, they were just like part of our we were as happy with at their home as we were at our own. Was that Molly? Her name was Molly, but we called her Granny, and um, uh, the neighbors all called her Miss Molly. You know, in the in the country in those days, well, uh, grown ups they they didn't say call their names, but they put Miss before their given names. See, and Mister, like Mister Charlie, that was Mister Charlie Box. And his wife's name was Molly, too, so we called her Miss Molly. And uh, that's not really very interesting, but <laughs> I didn't know what else <laughs> to say about it. And she's the one that you didn't get on her bed after she made her bed? Well, no, we didn't, but she let us do anything else we wanted to do. <laughs> and uh, we could, she just, well, she never corrected us. We Whatever we did was okay. And uh, Grandpa had a... Uh, a little, uh, little, we called it tank. It was a stock tank, I guess you'd call it. And it was just full of crawfish. Well, my grand, granny would uh, give, it, give us some bacon and big hunks, you know, and we'd go down and, oh, the crawfish just ate our <laughs> bo uh, meats before you knew it. And we had a big crowd up in there. So my oldest sister, she gave us a pan also with some grease. And we cooked those, my older sister did, down there at the tank. And I guess we ate them, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure they weren't very tasty. But she was just that kind of a granny. She just let us do as we pleased, and she'd think up things for us to do. And uh, we, but she lived to be 80. And uh, we just, and Grandpa too, he was just wonderful to us. He, he let us, you know, he didn't correct us or anything. I, we must have been awfully good kids because. <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it was 17 years ago this month that you and Granddad and Stephanie came to Europe and visited us in Europe. Yeah. And I remember that first d the first day y'all got there that evening something uh, you kind of something happened to you that kind of. I want you to t to tell a story about exactly what happened okay. and how it happened. Okay, they lived in the funniest house that I ever saw. It had a <laughs> <laughs> It was a French house. And they they did have. Uh, you had three stories, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And we were on the second story. Well, that house had one bathroom, one commode, and they weren't together. The commode was on the first floor. <laughs> and the, the uh, bathroom, bathtub was on the uh, second.
But I, I had to get up during the night, and I went had to go down. And it's they call them water claws. They say you can barely get in them. And <laughs> so uh, I went back upstairs, and we were sleeping in twin beds, my husband and I, and uh, they were pretty close together. And I couldn't see; it was dark as could be. And instead of uh, uh, going around to the side, I decided to jump into my bed. <laughs> and, I, and you were what about? You were seventy-three then. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I missed my bed and hit my shoulder on the side of it and broke it. So I laid there for the rest of the night. It was about three o'clock, I think, and I just lay there and didn't, didn't and waited till the others woke up. Then I told them what happened. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Dick immediately wanted to take me to the emergency room, which they did. And uh, there was a bunch of French doctors in there who didn't speak English. Well, in the meantime, they had picked up a girl that uh, spoke uh, English and French. They were, she was tutoring their children. And uh, so she went with us and interpreted for us. And <laughs> Those uh, doctors were talking about what a good time they'd had the night. I learned this later. What a good time they'd had the night before. And, of course, I was sitting there with my broken arm, and it was hurting. <laughs> and uh, so uh, later, this little girl, what was her name? Kermit. 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 <laughs> After Kermit the Frog, I think. Mm -hmm. That's right. And she told us that... They were talking about the dates they'd had the night before and laughing and having a good time. So, uh, But the only thing good about this, when they wouldn't let us pay the bill then because it, what do you call it, that socialized medicine or mm -hmm. something over there. They said, no, they'd send us a bill. When They, they made a lot of x-rays, and, and he uh, put some kind of a brace thing on it. And incidentally, when I got home, I found out it came from New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> well, they sent us a bill for eighteen dollars for all those <laughs> all that attention I got over there, and that was a good part about it. <laughs> That's it. Okay. I want to go back to Mark's song. Um, when did you become a Christian? I was uh, nine, uh, ten years old. And then what what church were y'all going to then? Or was uh, it just at this is, was at a revival meeting. We lived over in South Dallas then, and uh, it was uh, uh, at let's see what was the name of that church. It was just a small church over there, and we this we didn't really belong to it. So uh, anyway, I joined the church there. Was it true that Martin Luther was the evangelist? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was John Calvin. Dad. John Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mother, I'd like for you to tell us the little story about um, the time that your mother was going to can, and she told you to leave something alone in oh. the backyard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The dark side of grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> well, my sister Vivian and I, she was just two years younger. and uh, we She's had, not as pretty as you are, though. No, no, no she never was. <laughs> I mean, I never was as pretty as her. She no, was you got it back. pretty one in the family. But anyway, uh, we were out in the yard one day. We had a sort of, sort of a little orchard in our backyard, and the peach tree had some peaches on. Oh, they looked so good. They were so ripe. And... Uh, our sister, our older sister, who uh, did a lot of the cooking, had told us not to pick any of them because uh, they wanted to get enough to get ripe in order that uh, we could all have enough, you know, for the whole family. So we didn't pick any of them, but we went up in that tree and we ate the peaches off the seed. And <laughs> we, I said, well, we didn't pick them. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Her mother went out, and all these seeds were hanging by the stem. <laughs> That's it. Oh. Okay. We, we told them, and they all laughed about it. See, I told you you were prettier than Vivian. <laughs> well, you, you haven't got Vivian's picture here. <laughs> How old were you when this picture was made? I was 18. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 18. Were you married yet? Had you run off to Oklahoma yet? No, I was no. 20 when I married. <laughs> oh. 
Were you dating? Were you dating Granddad then? No. no. Who were you dating? Yeah. Well, <laughs> his name was Joe Lindsay. Oh, Joe Lindsay. 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 You're into those Lindsays, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, grandmother, how did you and Granddaddy meet? Well, you. It was way before. By half a chance. Yeah. No. It was. We went the same church. We were going to Calvary Baptist Church, and we lived quite a long way and walked home uh, every day because uh, you know we. Well, that's the way, only way we had to go, I guess. And uh, Lindsey walked, he and his brothers walked too. So uh, uh, I thought he was with my, with, with my Vivian because she was the one the boys liked the best. And she was the prettiest. <laughs> and, and just like I told you. No, she wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, I was just dumbfounded when he asked me for a date. <laughs> And then we were in the same BYPU at, at uh, church. That's a, a thing of the past, the BYPU. It's now the uh, training union. <coughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So if he asked you on a date, what, did, what's a, what was the date for you? What was the date? Oh, it was some Sunday school outfit. Out, Activity, I'm sure, <laughs> but we did. You didn't uh, have cars, no, or, right? You didn't, he go didn't a have a car thing. either. But my sister was going with a with a man who had a car, and we always went with them. And every Thursday night, I believe it was, we would go to the Majestic Theater, and on the way back, we would have a, a, a strawberry short uh, no, soda. I'm yeah. That was our. That was a weekly thing with us, and that happened. That went on for over a year, I guess. Where did y'all have? The, where was the soda shop? Oh, I forgot the name of it. I think it's gone out of business now. But there was a. There used to be one up in Cedar Crest Shopping Center called no, it Hartley's. Was, no, or something. It wasn't you went there. Cabell's, mother. Yeah. Over Cabell's, in, the, could over it in have been Trendy Cabell's? Hats. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. <coughs> well, it does to us. <laughs> our day. <dad. laughs> <laughs> Our date was what was what was important. What time did you have to be home? <laughs> Twelve o'clock sharp. Oh, wow, that's late. Now wait a minute. What Whoa. did you do back Didn't then I... between nine and twelve? <laughs> <laughs> we sat out on the porch. We sat out on the porch in the porch swing. Yeah, the south south then. Who else do it tonight? That's the big difference. <laughs> no, I remember one time I had a date with another boy. That was where we got engaged. And uh, we went over to White Rock and rented one of those boats, you know, and, well, we just rode all over that lake. We got home, it was after 12. My daddy was sitting in the porch swing waiting for us. <laughs> and he told him, he said, young man, my daughter's supposed to be home before 12 o'clock. <laughs> oh, oh, I got some at it, daddy, I could kill him. <laughs> but shortly after that, we, uh, we broke up. Okay, I have a question. Since we're doing honesty and all that on the 90th birthday, what did you really think when Aunt Vivian told you she was going to marry Uncle Jim and Dad told you <laughs> that he was going to marry Mom? Jim, Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear this. Yeah. <clears throat> no, uh, I, I like Jim. He was kind of forward. <laughs> A little bit more, well, uh, for instance, first he was kind of hickish, wasn't he? Well, <laughs> yeah. well I, you might call it that. But the very first night he came, he came home with her. They were going to Baylor University at the time. First thing he did was go through the refrigerator and get him something to drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was smooth, though. Yeah, he was. He smooth. was smooth. <laughs> he had to be to win her. Charismatic. <laughs> <laughs> but ever, anyway, Jim and I have always gotten along fine. I like him. <laughs> Are you going to keep him? <laughs> I think I'll keep him. Guys, think, guys oh. when you edit, would you please make a tape of that and just run it again? <laughs> Jim, she likes that part about you living in Utah. <laughs> okay, what about mom? What about mom? 
Oh, oh well, I liked her from the very first. They were just kids when they started dating. Yeah, then, of course, right they went with other people, and, you know, in the meantime. Many but, times. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> but they finally got serious when she, he was in college. And first thing I knew, they got engaged, and I was very happy about it. Okay, so what did they Granddad didn't, think? <clears throat> oh, well, Granddad was pleased, too. With both of them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he liked him too. <laughs> Stephanie's got some point she's trying to make. <laughs> <laughs> well, come out and say it, Stephanie. <laughs> I, I know my dad. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I would have thought Dick had gotten you broken in for dad, for, for Jim. <laughs> hey, it was, there, there was no such thing as breaking in for Jim. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Dick was crazy about Jim from, from the very first. I remember when I went down there and went to his dorm room. Holy cow. It was like a landfill. <laughs> there was a, there was a well, coffee can that they had nailed up on like the door right there where you walk under, and he was rooming with uh, XLM yet. And, I mean, it was like, I don't know how you ever found anything in that room because we went down there for a, a football weekend, and I got to go stay in your room over there. I thought, my gosh, if this is what college is like. But it was, a, <laughs> and that's what it was like, <laughs> come to find out. What was the can for? They played basketball, play basketball. with a coffee can, well, with I'll a tennis you, ball or something. He lost a few points with me that time, too, because I saw his room. <laughs> <laughs> Grandmother. I have to say that just one little point about your mothering. You can make fun of Jim Bailey's dorm room all you want, but the first time I walked into Dick's room, oh my. I could not see any carpet. <laughs> <laughs> so you watch. It was you know under what? renovation. You know what I did? <laughs> I kept the door closed all the time. That's right. <clears throat> hey, Grandma, I always hear these stories about when you used to pull, get a switch and switch Dad for, how many times did you actually do that? Oh, about three. Thank you. And I didn't spank. Listen. For days. <laughs> no, he'd go. He'd go a month, and he'd be just perfect. Then he'd just start picking at me, you know, and just irritating me till I'd I'd switch him again. But then he started wearing blue jeans and didn't do any good switching. So I quit. Child Protective Services gave me the blue jeans. <laughs> she always left. Tough kids. <laughs> yeah, same ones you wore. <laughs> Mother always left at least two little leaves on the end, so it'd sting <laughs> worse. <laughs> well, I never did spank you with a switch, did I? No, rose bush is what you well, used on the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not wire. your perfect. Yes, you did. I thought I used my hand on you. Okay, I have a question. What did it feel like when you had your first grandchild? My first grandchild had, was born in Japan, and I was just, <laughs> just oh, yeah. it was really hard because uh, I didn't get to see him till he was 11 months old. That was oh, that's probably a good thing. Yeah. Tell the story about Oh, yeah. yeah. We have yeah, to put this one well, on. Well, we told Dick that, you know, about the coming of the baby, and he said, uh, they well. They thought about the Stark and all that. Oh, dear. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, he said, I told he said, are they coming home first? And I said, no, the baby will be born in Japan. He said, will it look like a Japanese with those little funny eyes? <laughs> but he was, he was only 10. <laughs> yeah, I was 16. <laughs> That was his first year, and I said, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, me. Well, you know, it's probably a good thing, Grandmother, that you didn't get to see Mark until he was 11 months born. <laughs> oh, he was. Conehead. Oh, and Vivian sent me pictures all the time. You still got those dance for Naps four sips, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> and he was, he was beautiful to me. And uh, uh, when they came... He acted, actually, he actually acted like he knew me because they got off the plane. He was on Mark's shoulder, and he he saw me and started grinning. <laughs> and went right to her. <laughs> so, Grandmother, I just have a quick question. You can say no, but, but I hope you won't disappoint me. But could you sing me one of your songs? Oh, please. Please. 
What, what maybe I had a little. What yes. Is it? Yes. Now. <clears throat> what? What is what? it? The, there's the go to sleep, my little buckaroo. There's Billy boy. Billy boy. Billy there's. Boy. Well, no. There's also uh, the one about the bird. Oh yeah, the, the little bird. Once came I had a little pop, bird. Pop, pop. Oh. Yeah. Such a pretty little bird. No, 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 no. I can sing it. <laughs> well, sing I don't sing that well. Yes, you do. You know, oh. when you get you're to a be, grandmother. When you get to be 90, your voice gets cracked. Oh, please. But you're in the, you're in the Sunset <laughs> Serenaders. <laughs> okay. Second. Which one? Uh, Whichever one you want. <laughs> the Battle Hymn of the Republic. How are you, Boris? I'll try. Let's see. Once there was a little bird, came a hop, hop. Hop. And I said, little bird, won't you stop, stop, stop while I put a little salt on your tail, but you, don't you know? But he flew away, and cheer up, you are much too slow. <laughs> then he came around again with the hop, 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 and I said, little bird, will you stop, stop, stop? I have a pocket full of crumbs, I will give them to you. But he shook his little feathers and away he flew. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I know all of it. Yeah, do you remember Billy Boy? Remember that one? No, a little bit. Try to sing some of it, okay? Well, it's been so long, I don't know. Well, just sing what you know. Oh, where have you been, Billy boy, Billy boy? Oh, where have you been, charming Billy? I've been to seek a wife. She's the joy of my life. She's the young thing and cannot leave her mother. And then there are another two verses. And then, <clears throat> how old is she, Billy boy, Billy boy? How old is she, charming Billy? Three times six, four times seven, forty-eight, and eleven. She's a young thing and cannot be with my dad. Okay. I'm, I just know, as sure as I'm sitting here, that Kirk's sitting right over there enjoying every bit of this. And one time Kirk gave you something from the State Fair. Remember that funny story? It is such a Kirk story. Yeah. Well, he was so proud of giving me this gift. He had bought it with his own money. I don't even remember what it was now. But uh, we were at that, uh, oh, that big one, you know, they had in San Antonio. And uh, <clears throat> so before we got home, it was something he liked, too, real well. And he said, Grandmother, do you mind very much if I take that back and give you something else? <laughs> and I thought that was so funny. Take it back. But it was something he really wanted, you know, but he gave it to me. <laughs> Anybody else? I'll think oh, we could go on and on and on and on and on. Well, we're gonna we're gonna have some more. We won't have the video tonight, but we'll have dinner tonight, and we'll talk some more. Don't add that in many more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember, Dick can only stay in six months at a time. That's right. <laughs> Isn't that what he told you? He told you not to not to take magazine subscriptions not, yeah. longer than six months. Right. Yeah. Mom, I just want you to know. This morning, I checked the obituaries just to make sure this thing was still on today, <laughs> and it was. I had some things I was going to read, and I forgot them. Left them at home. We'll bring them tonight. Tonight. We'll, we'll yeah. Them. Mother, you know you've. Uh, You've had a full life, and, and your family has been around you, and you, uh, you, re you and Dad were really, you know, with my father dying when I was uh, 16, uh, the reason I was so forward was because <laughs> I considered you to be my father and my mother. And uh, so uh, I just felt like that coming into the family, I could just be as natural, and I, so I felt at home. And you made you made the home feel that way uh, for me as a student at Baylor, and uh, and I look forward to coming uh, because I came from a very poor family, and uh, you all had a television, 
And I <laughs> and so and so I, you know I had never watched television. I'd never seen television before. And so and this was in 1953. And so I, I wanted to come home every weekend after I met Vivian because I wanted to watch television. That's <laughs> <laughs> You know, Vivian. That's the first question you asked Vivian. Do you have a television? <laughs> <laughs> but Mother, you've had a full life. And, I, and I, it would be interesting to us to, for you to tell us what you consider to be one or two or three of the highlights of your life. Of, well, I'll tell you one thing. It was when all of our, every one of our children who is of age, our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, of course, if they're not yet, uh, became Christians. And even if you're not a Baptist, well, it's all right. <laughs> 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 as long as you're a Christian, that and I, I well, that guarantees a full attendance at that. dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but I am so proud of my family. There's not a criminal in the bunch. <laughs> <laughs> you know of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh me. What other? Is there any other things that you would look back on your life and point to as really high points, highlights? Well. If I had thought about it more, I might think of, I might could think of something. But uh, I've I've been happy all my life, and of course we've had tragedies, but uh, we all came out of them. And as a whole, my life has really been happy. <laughs> One in the family to go around and either um, we'll we'll do this like we do the gravy at dinner. We'll keep it at the mic as far oh, away from Mark, Mark as possible. <laughs> but uh, your favorite thing or food or or uh, memory with grandmother. <laughs> I have to have the girl tearing up. I remember when we were living in Texas and we always brought the girls up for holidays and for Thanksgiving and Easter and we'd always uh, we'd have Easter egg hunts on the little patio and uh, and take them to church and their Easter bonnets and everything and you were always so proud of them and it was oh, so yeah. fun I really enjoyed that. I did too. Favorite food? <laughs> everything? <laughs> you were the first person that could make green beans something I'd have seconds of. <laughs> well, I know one thing. Um, my mother is a very good uh, cook, and uh, she can cook desserts like no one else, except for one person, and that's <laughs> grandmother. <laughs> You'll never see this, so we're I can say this. <laughs> but grandmother, grandmother always promised me that she could make a pecan pie for me, and I tell you what, every time I come, there's one there for me. <laughs> and also, uh, uh, what is the other thing, Dick? The, the uh, the eclairs, is that cream puffs? The cream oh, puffs. Yes. Oh wow! Oh, right. oh, I just yep. made this cake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I from scratch. Yeah, yeah. Another thing I always loved about it, she said, "This one's not very good." And I mean, <laughs> 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 that's the last one. Thank you. Yeah. Robert. Yeah. <laughs> that's really hard because I have so many good memories. Mm -hmm. I mean, we always came back to Dallas, and we always came back to Grandma and Granddad's house, and. Mm -hmm slept in the living room and the kitchen or wherever. yeah wherever there was room <laughs> went through the drawer of batteries granddad's batteries and scotch tape um, <laughs> yeah, my so the eight year supply do you remember your uh, Root beer floats every night oh, before you went to bed. Big Red and Root Beer Floats. <laughs> oh, those were the best. And the glass top table. I have to say one of my favorite things was the table in the uh, kitchen with the glass top. And I guess it was, mm -hmm. it, you know, it was kind of outdoor furniture. And I had that in my apartment in college. Uh -huh. And that was just the neatest thing. I used to tell people, you know, my parents dated at this table. And it was just <laughs> a really neat thing. Um, as far as a favorite memory goes, I would probably be torn between two. One of them would be the first time in the house in Perryton that I got to climb the tree in the back 
because everybody else, I'm the youngest, and everybody else got to climb the tree, and everybody, and mom and everybody, no, no, you're too young, you're too young. Finally, one day, I got to climb the tree, and I think that might have been one of the greatest accomplishments of my life. I don't know if I actually made it up, but, you know, was, you're allowed to try. been allowed to. Um, and then, uh, you know, other than just the really, all the fun stuff, um, I guess I have two more really best memories. One of them is that Granddad gave me a candy striper doll, and I just remember Granddad giving me that candy striper doll, and I just loved it. And then uh, a third one was something that happened always. Um, it started when I was little, as far as I remember. started with Kirk. Um, he used to pick me up a lot. And there was that fan in the... <laughs> in the den and every time we came in that room Kirk would pick me up and grandmother would say watch the fan and every time I just remember and then it, you know and then it passed on to other people picking me up in the fan and as long as we ever went to that house grandmother would say watch the fan mm -hmm. um, but my favorite food would be the green beans too you know, those are the favorite mm -hmm. first green beans I ever um Eight, and now whenever I make them correctly, you know, let them sit there for two hours with all that junk on it. Um, <laughs> people always wonder how they're, you know, they're made, and so those are my favorite. And then everything else you make. So if you ever need a job, <laughs> you can stay at my house and cook for me. Well, the reason I had to stay up late at the at the apartment with the with the great grandkids and looking through the pictures and trying to explain to Aaron and Kayla who their great, 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 great grandmother was. And uncles and aunts and explaining too. the whole thing. But uh, it got kind of, it, it took some, it took something out of me and I said, you got any pimento cheese spread? <laughs> 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 and sure enough, it was right there in the fridge, along with, along with the Vienna sausages. And uh, um, so that was, it got me to thinking. Because pimento, she made the best pimento cheese. Oh. Pimento cheese popsicles, big red Pringles, uh, uh, lay stacks, lay stacks <laughs> rather. Um, yeah. And uh, breaking the popsicles in half on the hot summer day and sitting on the back porch and eating them because she wouldn't let us in the house with them. <laughs> Those were some of my favorite things. Fighting with Corby and Kit over who got the stool. Oh yeah. And uh, oh. and going through the closet, the closet. Uh -huh for all the toys and games and you kind of had to wade through granddad's uh his <laughs> jumps in your suits a brand new one every day but uh those were some of my favorite memories along with just hanging out in the living room while the grown-ups were busy being grown-ups and playing looking at that picture that that we talked about uh, the country road picture with the lake and that's it you have been my grandma and uh, my favorite memory is the year that Corbin and I were engaged <laughs> and he was in Austin and I was here, and every Tuesday night, you would fix me this huge dinner, the green beans, the green jello salad, the chicken <laughs> steak, the mashed <laughs> steak, the mashed potatoes, I mean, everything. I mean, it was just me and grandmother, and it was like this huge dinner. <laughs> 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 and I would eat every bit of it. <laughs> and, um, and then we would play games, and play games, and play games, and sometimes I would bring my sister, Devin. But you have been just, you've been my grandma, because I didn't, my grandparents were far away and mm. strange. I love the way you took me in and, and made me feel so special. Well. I always looked forward to him. And then I would always sleep on Wednesday at work. <laughs> 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 I remember so many things. I remember that the house on Perryton, you know, that's kind of the, the one that sticks to the most. And it's, um, it was just the best play yard area, that, I mean, ever. And, you know, everybody talks about climbing the trees. And, you know, you had your neighbor, like Jason Blight, running down the road. And, oh and Lou Carr. I mean, it was just like something out of a out of a, of an old uh, TV, black and white TV show or something. I mean, <laughs> um, but I remember... Uh, a lot about when your kid and I would sleep, the, the couch would pull out, we'd sleep on the sleep out couch, someone, they'd fight over who gets the cot, you know, and, <laughs> and uh, you had those little three light deals, like you had one, in, where you had like three lights, and you'd like turn the, and oh, two of them come on, one of them come on, you know, you had two, two sets of those. Three tables. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, 
I remember my favorite food actually. You fix me. You fix so many good meals. Uh, the ones I remember most was coming in in the summer in the from the heat. You call us in. We'd always be like Kraft macaroni and cheese and and green beans uh, yeah, and rolls beans. and drinking milk out of those beveled green glasses, which she still has. I mean, she still uses those. But um, the, my favorite uh, meal was on, in the mornings when we'd wake up. You'd set up the the, the trays and we'd eat. Uh, you'd crumble up the bacon in the eggs. In the, uh, <laughs> and we have bacon and, and, and crumbled, uh, crumbled bacon and scrambled eggs, and, and just watch whatever's on TV. I've been watching. I got my all my doses of Lawrence Welk and Hee Haw <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I, that I need. He's great, granddad in the right chair, grandma in the left chair, but watching Hee Haw and uh, Lawrence Welk. But um, Rock, one rocking and one reclining. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. granddad was a recliner. Yeah. Did you hear, I know. I, exercise bikes, I can't believe how much fun they were. <laughs> we need to get one of those. Um, but, and then as we got older, I remember, well, I always remember playing Yahtzee and playing dominoes on the card table. Um, and, but as we got older, the, the Tuesday night thing where we made it a habit to come over to every Tuesday night and play games, I rem remember that when we were older. But um, I just remember just how much it was always, you always hear other kids talk about their grandparents, they would complain. A lot of times about the oh we're going to grandparents you know rah, rah, and I just always had so much fun oh, we at my at my grandmother's I just didn't relate to that I mean going to grandmother's was, was preferable to being at home I mean it was like you know you always had well I mean you always had uh, you'd always have gift you always give us gifts all the time I mean you'd always have food you ne you never got crossed I mean with us you didn't I mean um, and I just really remember it being a place of fun and uh, so I just have a lot of fond memories of. Of you and Granddad. Thank you. If we're gonna run down food, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I, remember, I distinctly remember shake and bake chicken, yeah. macaroni and cheese, and lasur peas. I still love lasur peas because of that. Um, I also remember, obviously, smothered steak. That's why. I, I, yeah. That's that is now my favorite, and that is still my favorite. I mean, it's always been my favorite. And, and mashed potatoes. potatoes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Um, candy corn, nutter butters. Nutter butters in the bread box. In, in the bread box, <laughs> that's right. So they always had a different taste to them because they were in the bread box. <laughs> 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 that was fine. I remember the, the I remember the freezer being on the bottom. That yeah. was always cool. Nice. That was always cool. And everybody and, and, and something about breakfast you did not mention was orange or apple juice. Yeah, yeah you had your pick with the round with the round ice cubes in the round glasses. Um, some other thing, some other fond memories, I guess, would be, you know, Granddad had that real long stereo cabinet thing, yeah. and boy, if you touch that, <laughs> 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 you better watch yourself. Yeah. Uh, that was the largest cassette deck. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Um, and uh, I remember getting in, in bed with y'all in the mornings. That was always fun. And uh, but mm -hmm. one of one of the memories that that, that uh, that's a tough decision was one summer we were living in Ellick I think it was, and and each each of the three of us were going to go stay with y'all mm -hmm. at at a different time and the, I had the tough decision because I could either choose to go first and stay shorter time or go last and stay a longer time mm -hmm. and I think I chose to go first <laughs> and so I didn't get to stay as long and it was such a tough decision he's like do you go first and get there first and you know you get, you get to brag. <laughs> Or do you stay longer? <coughs> we always. I, I remember how many times do we stop at the Cotton Patch on the way to, to Dallas to go <laughs> to see <coughs> Grandma and Granddad. So that was that was a lot of fun. That Perryton house is like that's like the milestone. That's, yeah, yeah. that's where it all. Is. And by the way, the the tree <coughs> in the front yard that, that we used to like to climb, they they actually cut that down. So mm -hmm. I drive by there. Well, I heard that the house burned. So. It did burn. It did. It, but it's still there. They re, they repaired it. There, yeah. hmm. But. Yeah, and I remember all our friends, Jason Blackburn and David Brown across the street, and he had a popsicle stand one summer or something like that. It's just, man, a lot of, a lot of growing up there. Oh, the next room, Dottie? Dottie and Lou. Dottie and Lou. Dottie and Lou next door. Well, I only have about six years of memories with Grandmother, but um, just beginning with the whole food thing, I'd never had food like like Grandmother cooked. I remember we were going to dinner for the first time over there, and it was the four of us. Granny and Pops and Kit and I, and they kept saying, you just wait. You've never had food like this before. And um, they were right. Well, every other time we went, um, Pops would always say something like, Grandma, you don't have to cook so much food for us. We don't need two vegetables. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm loving this. So um, anyway, I, I, I really enjoyed the cookbook you made for me. I use it a lot. And 
always get um, compliments when I use your recipes because people don't make casseroles and um, food dishes like they used to. Um, so anyway, that's one. And my second is the first um, present you ever gave me. Do you know what that is? I know you'll never remember. No one will. But um, it was um, um, some knitted booties. The <laughs> 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 house shoes. And Kit and I had matching my first Christmas with the family. And I just thought that was great that you took the time to make some. And my feet are always very cold in winter. And you just said, oh, it's just a little something I've done. You know, yeah. no big deal. <coughs> but also, you've made <clears throat> our home very special in the afghans that you've made for us. Um, when we go to other people's homes, if they have an afghan out, it's really no big deal to them. But to us, it really means something to look across the room and know that you made that with us in mind. Um, and one more thing, I just love playing games with you. <laughs> I always have. That is so special to me. So, um... Yeah. Love you. Love you too. Well, grandmother spaghetti. Mm -hmm. Dick asked for that once a week. <coughs> grandmother spaghetti. Um, your coconut pie. My dad asked for that once a week. Um, your smothered steak. All the kids in the whole family have taken that recipe with them, and it's just it's famous all over the place. And. <laughs> I really couldn't have raised my children without you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. We're talking food now. We're talking yeah, food. That's why you got That's why <laughs> Well, I just real quick want to there's a stream, just a, it's all of y'all are talking about the, the, it's just a flood and stream of memories that used to come back because that was pretty much, I mean, between that and going to the lake to go water scan, that was vacation. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and definitely, Corby, it's, a, it's amazing. We all look forward to go see our grandparents. It wasn't like, oh, it's so boring. It was never boring. boring. Never boring at all. Um, <clears throat> I remember getting my first two six guns. This is, before, <laughs> this is before Periton, but I mean that whole outfit, the hat, the the chaps, weren't there chaps? Oh, I have that. And the guns and the everything, I mean, <laughs> I remember tickling our backs in that corner bedroom. I mean, that was... I mean, we'd sit there for hours. hours. Dick, I mean, yeah. we were thinking each other's back. Oh, no, it's your turn. No, it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tony, get the side. Get this side. Oh, oh stop. That, <laughs> now, Rob. Oh, just uh, incredible. I sh the first time I ever shaved was in that bathroom with grand granddaddy's electric razor that took all my skin off. <laughs> it was, I'm going, is this what I got to look forward to? And searching through his uh, aqua velva. Oh. I think he had aqua velva. I remember that, that green thing. And going, oh, yeah, I'm a man now. <laughs> ah, all the way to the climbing the trees to... The pool. To listening to Peter, Paul, and Mary and the mamas and the papas on the floor there in front of the stereo. I mean, I, I got to know all those songs. I think the most vivid memory I have, though, is the smell of your house. Yes. Walk in the door. Grandmother's house. Yeah. Smell. It smelled so wonderful. A total unique smell. Never smelled it anywhere else. Anywhere. Only. And, and oh, that hope it was good. Any package that came from her house smelled just like the house. Yes, it would come in that way. And the pot roast that yeah, always yeah. went in before church. Now that I've been a restaurateur, I remember that pot roast was this big when it went in. Yeah. By the time we got home, it's about this big. Because <laughs> we always ate our meat well done. Mm -hmm. But then we smothered it with gravy, so it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Um, oh, man, the green beans. And and then I'll never forget when I went to my first Texas OU ball game, 
stopping by, and you should have kicked us out of the house. <laughs> we were the that was with Poncho. Oh, we were the stinkiest bunch I've got of guys. Got a picture of you. I know. Yeah. We were <laughs> just. You should have just said, "Get out of here and come back when you're presentable." <laughs> oh, oh should have kicked us out on that one. <laughs> and then, definitely more recently, uh, when we, uh, when my family and I, we moved back to Texas and and. Uh, Doing the working up the ladder at Mr. Gaddy's, very very special memories of, of driving to your house on three different occasions for Thanksgiving and Easter with mm -hmm. the little babies and the Easter egg hunt we had. That was really really special because you had all the you had three different generations and and my kids look at you like grandmother too. <laughs> I mean it, it's almost there's no di discernible difference, but. Uh, yeah, definitely. The breakfasts were unique. I never had eggs chopped up with bacon before, because you know, and we always fight over the last piece of bacon, and uh, we always had to have it. And, and the, the pimento cheese, oh man, those sandwiches were good. And and the air conditioner that ran in the den, full blast. Oh, yeah. That was the coldest room, and we all wanted to <coughs> sleep on that couch. I remember sleeping on the couch yeah. with that cold air coming across that leather couch. Oh man, but. Uh, Grandmother, it, you're such a integral part of all of our lives. I mean, it's just been wonderful, and the fact that we all had this wonderful experience, uh, thanks to you, because well, you created this whole environment for us. Thank, thank you, you so much, and we're going to do the same thing. <laughs> Good. There was one more thing. Uh, when you when you said that one of your the the best things about your life is that all of us kids have accepted Christ, you said there weren't any criminals. Well. <laughs> If I remember correctly, when we were kids, you used to take us to movies, and we would walk by the candy counter. We wouldn't stop, because when you opened your purse, out came the Clark bars. <laughs> <laughs> so, Grandmother, luckily, luckily back then it wasn't a problem, but nowadays it would get in some serious trouble if you're, if you're bringing <laughs> in your money. Yeah. candy into the yeah. theater. Oh, yeah. I just remember, I just remember that. I remember going to see Flash Gordon for Corby's birthday one time, and then that happened. And, and 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 then in the middle of Flash Gordon, if you remember this, all of us kids went, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe Grandmother's sitting here watching this." <laughs> Favorite food? Huh? Okay. Potato salad. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've already been in it this morning. <laughs> Oh yeah, fried. Oh, thank you, thank you, fried okra. It is. Can't even cook it now. They don't know what okra is in California. Mm -hmm. That's that. That's that slimy thing. You know, when I think about being a little child. I'm gonna cry. Okay, <laughs> Toss it. <laughs> the things I re the really warm, fuzzy things I remember is that mother would sit with me and this before Dick came along, I was pretty small. On the love seat in the living room. And we would just have a love in, you know? <laughs> We'd talk and we'd play and we'd play the little kid games, you know. And uh, I just, that's some of the earliest memories I remember being your daughter <laughs> was sitting there in your lap but for I don't know how long, it seemed like hours <laughs> to me. But you stayed with me and we just we just loved each other and played and and that that's one of the, the early, early memories I have um, was the warmth and the love. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> I guess I get to finish it up. <clears throat> uh, I had the perfect childhood. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We, we lived uh, with family down the street. Uh, did a lot of things with cousins and all that. We lived about four blocks from a dump, which was like a treasure chest of stuff that people threw away that just the neatest stuff in the world to play with. 
Uh, we used to walk down there and ride our bikes down there. And bring part of it home with you. <laughs> <laughs> was that Chalk Hills? Yeah, no, that was, uh, it was just that dump down there off Illinois and <coughs> Cedar Crest down there somewhere, whatever it was. We called it Chalk Hills. Um, where those old and urban tracks were. But then uh, favorite foods, um, every, I mean, Mom never cooked anything bad in her life. It, it was all just fantastic. And, I mean, I, when you grow up with roast every Sunday, or it just... But the two things that are totally unique to what she makes, or three, one was those cream puffs. I have never, ever tasted cream puffs like Mom makes. But, and everybody's already mentioned the potato salad and the spaghetti. I, they're, they're unique in the world. You can't buy a potato salad anywhere that tastes like that. And then her spaghetti, that Italian stuff she makes with all the green peppers. I mean, you go buy spaghetti and it's spaghetti and some kind of sauce. But this stuff she makes just has a flavor to it all its own. But in closing, what I'd like to say about mom is uh, it's really uh, Proverbs 31. When you read Proverbs 31, you think about what? That's it. Happy birthday to you. 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 And six months more. Yeah. Six months more. <laughs> <laughs> now, Vivian said that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say, I was sitting here thinking that that would be appropriate to say. Yeah, six more. Renewable every six yeah, months. Renewable every six months. <laughs> well, there's no doubt, Grandmother, that you have affected all of our faith life and our faith pilgrimage. Dear God, you give us life and love and grace in so many ways all of us as members of, the, of this family directly and indirectly have been affected by the life of this servant of yours she has shared her love without limits she has given without any thought of any return she has opened her heart and herself and we are eternally grateful that we have been privileged to be a part of such a giving, loving, caring person's life. Things be hers and may her life continue to be long. We thank you for what she has influenced in us because it reflects the love and the grace and the forgiveness that we all know through Jesus Christ our Lord. In whose name we pray. Amen.